Conversations. Conversations with, with S.D. Booker. Booker. Welcome to Conversations with S.D. Booker by way of a toast to the men with S.D. Booker. Today we got a special guest. She's a mother. She's a daughter. She's a sister, an entrepreneur. She's a friend and she's single fellows. We got Piper from Pretty Piper Prince. How you doing? Hey, everybody. I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm well. I'm great, actually. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So you are the first episode of a series. I, I may start. I, I'll see. I may start titled Chronicles of the Independent Single Black Female. I know, okay. Yeah, I know that's a, a mouthful um, and maybe a, a lightning rod, but I think it's something we need to discuss as a community. I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, and I'm humbled. Either. Thank you. Thank you oh, for yeah. having me on and thank you for allowing me to be your first. No doubt. No doubt. I appreciate mm -hmm. you. I know you're a busy woman, a busy entrepreneur. So uh, yes. I thank you for taking the time to do this. Now, Absolutely. just to give the people uh, some background on, on, on us, uh, maybe okay. two years ago, I started recording, interviewing young, young ladies uh, for my next book, the book I'm currently writing, Palma Christie. And uh, I probably was, I had in mind to do, to interview 12 women. I ended up interviewing 13, 13, but I think you were the, I think you were the second or third uh, woman okay. interview. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you saw the post uh, I, I was putting out, uh, showing the clippings of the interviews I was doing, the pics. And you, you reached out to me and said, hey, you got a story. You know, I heard your story. I said, oh, yeah, definitely. You know, she needs to be a part of this project. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I came over to your place. Me and Yaya, I interviewed you, you recorded, documented your, your life story. And that's going to be uh, in, a, in Palmer Christie, one of the 13 women in Palmer Christie in a real life uh, fact, uh, real life fiction uh, huh. type, type writing. Uh, but uh, so a lot of it's true. A lot of it's fictional. But uh, OK, so where did Palmer Christie come from? Where did where did that name come from? You know, when I wrote the, uh, the Toast to the Men, I had mm -hmm. uh, my biggest demographic that supported me was women, the black woman, actually. Um, right. So, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know if they supported me because they thought they was going to get some juice, you know, like or uh, I don't know what it was. They're trying to learn men, the black man. Uh, but regardless, yeah. I got the support. And you purchased okay. the book. You purchased the book, too. You, you supported me. Yeah, I did. Yeah, of yeah. course. So I appreciate I that. My friends, if my friends are doing something, whether it's the same thing I'm doing, it doesn't matter if you're my friend and I call, that word is huge to me. If I, I don't call everybody a friend. So if, you know, if you're my friend and you have a venture going, then I'm definitely going to support it. No doubt. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. So women were saying, when are you going to create a toast to the women? And I was like, nah, I want to keep that with the men uh you know that energy with the men but i was like i do need to do something for the women and uh yeah yeah, yeah. so uh palma christi which is latin for the healing hands of christ and oh. uh, yeah yeah it's latin for the healing hands of christ and why okay so and i know you're editing this but why mm -hmm. why um use the latin version of something why not use the you know a different version of it other than a Latin version. Why that? Yeah, because uh, well, a lot of people don't know the origin and uh, the phonics of, a, of the word has power. You know, letters have power. Uh, the pronunciation mm -hmm. of words have power. You know, this right. is things, these are things that have been lost uh, over time. The power of words. Uh, Jesus, there was no J back then <laughs> when Jesus roamed the earth. That was his, his name is Yahweh. There was no J in the vocabulary. It, there, there, just, there just wasn't. And so words have uh, names have power. If someone mispronounce your name, uh, you need to correct them immediately. If they misspell your name, correct them immediately because your name and the letters, the way they sequence, their sequence have power. So I wanted to use right. the origin of that, uh, the Palma Christi uh, 
you know, I think it's exotic, it's sexy, but it also has power. And I wanted to go to the root of it. And uh, and and actually uh, castor oil. So the castor bean uh, has many properties. It has positive properties. Man, we use castor oil for a lot of stuff. I don't know if you grew up on yeah. it. Yeah, but castor oil... Uh, has has uh has a lot of power from the hair for the skin for the indigestion but within the castor bean also if you don't know what you're doing and how to crack it and how to extract that oil it also has the most powerful powerful uh ingredient and in, uh a liquid in it uh and, and which is uh risen uh and so that can kill you just a little bit of it can kill you so although it's so powerful in a positive way, it's it, it's so deadly also. And I was like, man, that that is the woman. If you don't know how to crack the woman and, and, and the power of her and the danger of her, she could be a blessing, she could be liberty, but she can also kill you. Uh, so, you know, you got to know what you're dealing with. And, and women need to know their power from a positive perspective and the negative perspective and live accordingly. So, right. and uh, and in these stories, these 13 women who tell me their story, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we get the good, the bad, the ugly. And we, we also get to see how a lot of these girls, when they were girls, uh, were not uh, treated right. They were not dealt with right. And that can also turn into poison later on because they were not treated right. They could turn to poison. Or storm. Yes. But once they learn their power, their true essence, they could be the positive effects of that castor being of the castor oil and, and uh, be their healing That's power. True. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that to me because I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what it is. And you know what? I don't know why I keep forgetting in this since I've been writing a book. The castor bean is something with that seed. I forget, like the castor bean. But uh, yeah, I definitely can break it down, you know, the history of it, though. Yeah. Remember it by, you know, uh, castor, like. Maybe Casper. One, yeah. one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is uh, He Without Seeing Cast the First Stone. Mm. So. I like that. I like that. That's a good way to remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So fast forward, uh, you look, you view my my recent video. One of my recent videos I uploaded um, on YouTube, which spoke about the entitled, delusional, and wealthy woman. Yes, yeah, that yeah, caught that was, my attention. Yeah, that was a that was in a, a major story. way. Yeah, that was a true yeah. story. I left out some things. I wanted to keep it respectful and gentleman like. Uh, but the nuggets, the true nuggets of it, I think I delivered and, and conveyed to the people the lessons I've learned from it. But uh, clearly, because it caught my attention. Yeah, yeah. So you reached out and uh, and said, you know, how, how I caught your attention that you loved it, and you're like, hey, I got a I got a similar story for you. Uh, you know, from the female perspective, you know, got some similarities to what you just told. How about that? How about you tell that? And I listened to it. I was like, man, yeah, I definitely can uh, relate that to the people, but it'd be even better if you came on. And so here we are. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Now, first off, you know, I want to uh, acknowledge you as an entrepreneur, and we're going to take care of that throughout the video and address that, acknowledge that throughout the video. But what is Pretty Piper Prince? And how did it start? Okay, well, Pretty Piper Prince is me, totally. This is my logo, Pretty Piper Prince. Um, I make pretty my pretty Piper Prince make custom shirts, hats, custom pretty much anything, capes, aprons for the barbers and the hairstylists, um, jewelry. Um, smoke trays, dominoes, uh, just just about anything, and all of these things, all of these things are done by uh, hand. You know, I make them, make everything by hand from scratch. And so, 
Pretty Piper Prince began about almost four years ago now. Um, when I first started flying, did you catch that? When yeah. I first started flying, yeah. Yeah. Piper is um, a pilot. So that's what the name Pretty Piper came from. My other friends who also fly planes, um, the Piper aircraft is my favorite of them all. And so my friends, when I would go fly with them, or if I'm going to fly by myself, you know, I look like this. And then when you go out onto the ramp, you're not expecting somebody that look like this right. to come out of the t of terminal um, to go fly this plane. And so my friends started calling me Pretty Piper. And so I would go to, before I started making shirts, um, I had another friend and my brother made shirts as well. He doesn't anymore, but he used to. And so I would have my brother to make me these corny sayings and my friend, um, keep calm, I'm a student pilot, keep calm, you know, because I'm the captain, nah, come on, um, I'm the pilot because that one, the nah, comma, I'm the pilot under there, that one was more powerful to me than absolutely any shirt because when I would go out onto the ramp, like I said a moment ago, people did not realize that I was the actual pilot. They're asking me where they put their luggage. Wow, wow, wow. Can I restock the water in the refrigerator in the plane? Wow. I'm sorry, that's not my job. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. my shirt, so instead of talking to people pre-COVID, um, pre-mask and all that kind of stuff. I just, to stop them even conversating with me, because I'm a brown girl in the cockpit, I put, nah, I'm the pilot. So you're going to see this shirt. Right. And this shirt going to tell you, stop asking me questions. So, but anyway, um, I would go to these aviation conferences, right? And I would wear these uh, different shirts to keep calm. I'm a student pilot. And, um, and so several people, after I went to that second conference, Several people kept asking me, hey, where'd you get that shirt from? Because there wasn't a, there was not a market out there for it, you know? And so I was like, oh, my brother made it for me. Or, oh, a friend of mine made it. And after that second conference, I was like, ding, 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 a light bulb went out. I said, you know what? I'm going to bottle this up and I'm going to make sure it's myself. So it started out, Pretty Piper Prince started out making aviation related apparel only. Hmm. because that's where my mental, that's where I was. I was just starting to learn how to fly. I'd won all these scholarships. I'm a, a scholarship recipient of seven different scholarships. And so every time I would go and win a scholarship to accept my award, I'd have, you know, just walking around, I have on a shirt and people would stop me. And so I didn't know what I was going to call my business. I was like, I'm just going to start making shirts. I don't know what I'm going to call it, but I'm just going to start making the shirts. Wow. And it just hit me. All my friends call me Pretty Piper. There you go. So I'm going to call this Pretty Piper Prince. And it just went from there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. I'll be seeing you doing your thing. I've, I've supported. Uh, I think you got me a, you got me a set. Uh, ashtray lighter. And yes. It was set uh, the cowboys. Tracing. Yeah. Cowboy. Cowboy. No cowboys. Yeah. That was cowboy. I was going to put on a cowboy jersey for this, but I said, no, nah, I got to put on my business shirt. No, no doubt. Represent for I'm yourself so, first. Yeah. Man, I'm so, exactly, but I'm so proud of that team. But anyway, that's another story. Right. Right. We have limited time today. So this, this is rather unique. Uh, I don't believe I've ever met a female pilot. What, what got you into mm -hmm. that? And I know this, that's, that's, very huge for you because you're a part of an organization that kind of pushes that too for, for young girls yeah. to fly. Absolutely. I'm actually a member of several different um, aviation organizations right here in DFW and international inter in, um, organizations as well. Um, so I got started with aviation, um, like for, for real, for real. Seriously, I wanted to fly a plane when I was a little girl. When I was 10 years old, the first time I was ever on a plane, I, that were, that's where my love for flying came from. My very first time ever getting on a plane. I've never been to the military. People ask me all the time, you're in aviation. Did you, did you go to the service? No, I did not. It took me a while, but here I am. So, you know, I didn't know which way to go right. to get 
involved in aviation because I was such a small kid. But I knew that whenever I would hear of or see a plane in the sky, I'm I'm fixated on that. So in junior high and high school, um, shout out to E.B. Comstock and H. Grady Spruce. Right. Um, now, I, actually, yes, folks, uh, just quick pause. I went to, I'm older than her, but I went to E.B. Comstock <laughs> Junior High and Spruce High School as well. Man, yes. small world. So yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> so I was in ROTC all the way through from junior high all the way through high school. And so my thing was, I was supposed to, I really truly was supposed to go to the Air Force. I really feel like I was supposed to be a pilot well before now, mm -hmm. but things happened and um, I became a mom. I was pregnant my senior year when I graduated high school, I was seven months, seven and a half months pregnant with my oldest son. So the United States Air Force told me that I had two options that I could, I either be married, I needed to be married, or I needed to sign my parental rights over to my mom mm. um, if I wanted to go to the Air Force. And I was like, I wasn't trying to do either one. I wasn't thinking about marriage at the time. And I sure wasn't about to give my, I was excited about becoming right. a mom. I wasn't going to give my baby away. And I didn't know that I was pregnant. I didn't know. I found out right before graduation because, you know, I was very active in school. So you know, my tummy didn't show until I started getting on up into the months. So I didn't know that I was pregnant. But either way, um, I drove the school bus for 14 years for Dallas County Schools. And the last four years of being a school bus driver, I was the uh, shop steward. Um, I was a union rep. And so I was a union rep for one of the biggest bus lots that Dallas County had at that time, which is Longview over off of uh, 30 and uh, Longview. Right. And so um, um, had over 550 bus drivers at one bus lot. And so my supervisor and I, we had to meet once a week and talk about things, you know, I wanted to let, you know, I had to let him know before um, an agreement is filed and let him know what the co-workers are thinking and what the co-workers are bringing to me. So before our meeting, we were just talking. We sat down and we had, we're having a conversation and he told me that he was originally from LA and I'm like, me too. And then he told me that he was in the service and I was like, I wanted to go, but I didn't, it didn't happen. Then he told me it was an aircraft dispatcher. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> you know, what's an aircraft right. dispatcher? I'm thinking because I was ignorant to the facts. I didn't know. I thought that it was um, the people that's at the tower in the tower in the airport. Right. And, and that's not the case. Those are air traffic controllers, which are basically the police of the air. They give you the clearance to come into the airport or fly out of the airport. And they tell you what flight level to be on the people in the tower. So air, um, aircraft dispatcher is someone who creates the flight plans for the pilot. Um, so he told me what school he went to. I went to that school. I sat in a class. They let me observe to see if that's something that I wanted to do. And I was, again, I was infatuated. Like my children were, at this time, I think my boys were going to Frederick Douglass. One was at Frederick Douglass and the other one was at Comstock. So I, uh, in Pleasant Grove. So I, I was like, my kids are still small. I can't fly a plane right now, but maybe I could do aircraft dispatching. And, but I didn't know how I was going to fund it. I didn't know anything about any of the organizations that I'm a member of now. So the next best thing for me at that time, the, the only thing that I knew how to do was to, um, I tried to get a loan and that didn't work. My credit union um, at the time, that particular credit union was trying to give me a loan. And so I knew I had driven a school bus from 18 years old to 32 at that time. And so I had money in my 401, you know, my teacher retirement. Right. So I withdrew my teacher retirement and I resigned at such a young age <laughs> after being at my job for 14 years. And I got so many questions. Are you sure you want to do this? Right. You're vested into the company. Are you sure? I'm like, I'm positive. I'm doing this. So next thing I know, I went to school and I became an aircraft dispatcher. So, and, and what that is, is, um, like I said, you create the flight plans for the pilot. I would tell the captain what aircraft he's going to be on, how many passengers, if passengers, how much freight, if freight. I would tell him 
um, his destinations, his alternate destinations. I would uh, order his fuel for him. Um, I do the weight and balance on the aircraft. That was my favorite thing because I love numbers. I'm so good at math. Um, and so weight and balance, I would calculate the weight and balance for the aircraft. And then um, the most important thing was the weather. I would read the weather. I would print his weather packet out for him. And I sign it, the captain, which we call him in the aviation world is the PIC, the pilot in command. So I sign it, the PIC signs it, it becomes a legal document. And I'm just as responsible for that flight from the time wheels up to the time wheels down. So I did that for two years until I met the first two black pilots I ever met in life. They walked into the dispatch office and mind you, the dispatch office is very a secure, a very secured area. Right. You have to have um, a code for the door, your fingerprint, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Terrorists get in there, it will, it, it could destroy so much. And so um, they came into the dispatch office and they stopped <laughs> when they saw me sitting there at my desk in my cubicle. And they walked over to me and was like, when did you, how? when did you start working here? They didn't, it wasn't, oh, hey, how you doing? It was just, when did you start working here? Right. And they immediately, it was, well, how you doing, Captain Harris? It's nice to finally meet you. And they were like, because I talked to them over the phone. Right. Oh. And I have this voice. So now they're putting know, a like, face with the voice. You can't tell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't tell that this sister's sitting behind his desk, behind his phone. Right. So I'm just talking to them, creating their flight plans for them. And I finally meet them. And the captain says, you need to be flying. If you're creating flight plans for us, you need to be flying these planes. And they literally sparked a flame in me that was already dimly lit. And it just went from there. I took off. I mean, and they are still my mentors till this day. <laughs> wow, wow. So it was amazing. I mean, it's, it's so when people ask me how I got involved in aviation, I tell people all the time, it's a love story. It really is a love, love story for me because I love planes. I love everything about them, how the, the aerodynamics, how they work. You know, this big thing is just going to come off the ground. Like, <laughs> right, know? right, right. So that's how I started flying, you know, and, wow. and then I got involved. The very first organization I got involved with was um, um, OBAP, the, mm -hmm. and that's the acronym for the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals. So, and I won my first scholarship with OBAP and I hadn't even started flying at that time. OBAP has a, a, another entity up under them called Sisters of the Skies. So in 2016, Sisters of the Skies, which is a group of African-American female pilots, let me be clear, African-American female pilots make up less than half of 1% of the pilots in the United States. Oh, and wow. in the United States, only 3% of those pilots are black pilots, period. So females make up less than half of 1% of that 3%. Wow. wow. So Sisters of the Skies, if, you, if there's a black pilot out here, I know them because I am a member of Sisters of the Skies. And so, um, I am Sisters of the Sky's first scholarship recipient ever in its history. In 2016, they started and I had to write an essay telling why I needed this money and I won. I just literally told my story. That's wow. it. That, that was that's enough. It. That's enough. That, that's it. And I won this scholarship out of over 200 people that applied for it. And um, it could have been more than that. I think the number was like two, 250, something like that. So, and then I won a scholarship with um, Alaska Airlines through OBAP. Okay. I'm also a member of Women in Aviation, which is here. Uh, they're, it's, they're international. And so um, you don't have to be a woman to be in Women in Aviation. It's open for everyone. But um, 
women in aviation, I won, a, I can't remember which particular scholarship it was with them. Now I also won a scholarship with the 99s, mm -hmm. which was started by Amelia Earhart. Wow. And you have to be a woman to be a 99. So for the Dallas 99s, I am no longer uh, sitting in the, um, the activity chair, but I used to be the activity chairwoman for the Dallas 99s chapter. And if you go to the city of, if ever at the city of Terrell's uh, airport or out that way, um, I spearheaded and organized for the compass rose to be painted on the ground. I even had the city of Terrell to, um, they funded us with the paint. We didn't have to do anything but show up with our hands and paint brushes for the ground. So they bought the, the highway paint and the, um, the handicap, the blue handicap uh, mm -hmm. color paint. And that paint is not cheap. It's not like going to Sherman Williams and getting some paint uh, for the walls. It's very expensive. So the city of Terrell, I orchestrated that and I'm very proud of it. Um, so any pilots that I meet, I tell them if you ever fly over Terrell Airport, you know, look down, you'll see the compass rose on the ground. And I orchestrated that. I'm really excited about that. Wow. I wow. sit on the board, the airport board for Terrell, the city of Terrell, even still now. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also my most favorite organization that I'm a member of which I encourage any young person, if you think that you want to be, if you have any inkling of wanting to be a pilot, please look into and join uh, Civil Air Patrol. They have, it's an international organization and they have chapters all over, all over. There's one here in Rockwall, there's one in Mesquite, there's one in Redbird, there's one in Grand Prairie, they're, they're everywhere. I'm a member of the Redbird Squadron. I'm a second lieutenant for the Silver Air Patrol, which is an auxiliary of the Air Force. And it's basically for kids, you know, young people learning it, teaching them um, how to fly and teaching them diff just different things. And there's so many different org uh, um, activities that they do. So I, I encourage anyone, if you, you're definitely, if you're looking for something to put your kids in for the summertime, like a camp or something like that, Silver Air Patrol is definitely the, the way to go. It can go on these kids' um, resumes and all of that kind of stuff. And some people don't even know that their kids should have a resume, you know, yeah, but yeah. they really true. Yeah, I didn't know that uh, until recently, that kids should have a resume. Wow. Children yeah. should definitely have a resume, especially if they're doing, um, they're like, I've never worked before. I don't have, I'm not even old enough to get a job, but guess what? You do community service. Right. If you do community service, you need a resume. Right. Right. If you're involved right. in extracurricular activities, you know, if you're involved, whether it be at your church, right. Whether it be, um, school, whatever, it doesn't matter. School sports. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. Exactly. That needs yeah. to be on the child's resume. And, you know, I, I got my son started with that years ago, just like, um, with building their credit. A lot of people don't know. I know we're going somewhere else and I'm going to get back on track know. with you oh, here. Just... We're chopping it up. Yeah. Okay. So, well, you know, building the children's credit. When my son turned 18, his credit score was so high, he could have bought a house. He could have bought a house. My oldest son's, my youngest son too, but my oldest son, when he turned 18, his credit score was 805. All because his mother paid her bills on time. I added them to my credit cards when they were like 13, 14, you know, that mm -hmm. age. So I added them to all my credit cards. They didn't, excuse me, they didn't even know <laughs> that they were added to my credit cards. I surely wasn't going to give them one. Right. I just wanted their credit score to be high, high. Right. And that boy was able, his credit score was so high. <laughs> so high. So I tell all people, if you're you have teen, teenagers or preteens, add them to your credit cards, especially if you're a person that um pay your bills on time. <laughs> right, right, you right. know, because that's major. That's oh yeah, yeah that's, that's huge. Major. You gotta pay your bills it, on time. It gives them a, a great head start. Uh absolutely. Yeah, yeah to, to start. Absolutely. I'm day. glad that I was able to do that for my son. And then um once he realized it, I had to sit him down. I think he was like. 17 
16, 17, something like that. His credit score kept uh, rising and we kept getting things in the mail where he's able to apply for credit cards. And so I would take them and I would cut it up, chop it up, put it in a shredder or whatever. And I tell him, look, this is very important. I told, explained to him the importance of securing your, your, your social security card. Like, no, that's, that's so private. That is so private. You don't just give that to anyone. No one should know your social security number right. except me. I'm good with numbers. I know everybody's social. Mine, my mama's, my kids, their dad, it's, it's all here. Right. Right. So, but I told my sons, don't, you know, that's important. You know, your, so, your social security and your credit is very important and don't abuse it because if you abuse it, it will be so hard, so hard. It's just like a person that's, overweight it's, it's really easy to to gain the weight because you right. you're going to eat everything that you want you're going to eat 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 and then when you try to lose the weight it's so hard to lose so the hard. weight yeah so just it's so hard, hard to lose right. the weight. yeah just the same thing with your credit yeah, it's so yeah. hard to fix it back yeah just uh if you get still track. practice good good habits yeah Absolutely. So, you don't, so you don't have to go through that but yeah so man that story your story your trek alone I man has so many layers to it I mean, that is a love story. I mean, there's so many yeah. stories about stepping out on faith and uh, having mentors, which is very important. Absolutely. And and uh, I tell brothers all the time, man, you got to take those chances, calculated chances, but follow your dreams. And that's where you're going to, you know, find true happiness when you're doing something you're passionate about. Absolutely. I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm so happy. I mean, although I'm not where I want to be. Right. I'm not there yet. You know, I don't fly for the airline. Um, and for those of you who are wondering, you know, um, uh, you're a pilot who you fly for. Well, I fly for these people that own their own jet. And I can't really put their business out there, the name of the business, but I will say that they create video games and um, they live here in the DFW area. Their jet is in McKinney. So they have another home, excuse me. They have another home in Utah. And um, they fly to LA and Miami quite often for business. Um, and so I fly for them. And you have to have 1500 hours to fly for the airline. So I'm working, I'm on the race to 1500 is what most pilots call it. Race to 1500 so that I can get hired for American Airlines. I'm already an American Airlines cadet. So I was, I was, I was, um, invited into the cadet Academy and I'm really excited about that. I haven't told a lot of people about that, but I just told the world yeah, and, congratulations. Um, thank you. So I'm excited about that because I'm nearing those 1500 hours. I still got about a year to go, but that's nothing. <laughs> right, right, right. It'll come and pass before I know it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll fly by. Now, man, I know brothers are watching, and they're yeah. saying, man, this woman, this woman shows mm -hmm. that she's a, she's a, she's a, a dedicated a boss. She, she, she has work <laughs> ethic. She was on the job, what, 14 years? The yeah. Year. Okay. She shows my first and only job. I drove the school, school bus 14 years. She, she's, uh, she's showing that. She uh, can step out on faith and follow her dreams. So she, she you know, she has, she has that going for her. And uh, she's an entrepreneur doing her thing on mm -hmm. that. And she's smart. Yeah. She's a pilot. Everybody don't have the capability to be a pilot, right? So she's <laughs> intelligent. So why is Piper single? Why is Piper single? That is a huge huge question a tall order right there like yeah. listen i we all have types mm -hmm. you have a type i have a type everyone has their type and so for a long time i've always gravitated towards that type now i've not been in very many relationships but the ones that i have have been within my type my last major relationship was with a city councilman and so um it didn't work out you know um and people ask me all the time you guys looked great together why didn't it work out well honestly I felt like that particular guy was um a hypocrite 
Mm. I'm not gonna call his name, but I really feel like he was a hypocrite because he was number one, he was a Trump supporter. I did not know that. I'm a Trump supporter. <laughs> that's fine. I know. I, I mean, that's that's fine. You knew that though. <laughs> yes, I knew that. Right. But here's my thing with him. He told me. <laughs> no, come on. He, he just told me how. Well, I'm gonna leave that part alone. Okay, so he did one thing he did tell me it was that he was not okay with and how he felt about people that were on um section eight on food stamps and things like that. But the very district that you represent, those people are in your district. So how can you to me, in my eyes, I felt like he was a hypocrite and I told him that. I don't think and, so. I don't think so. Let me let me tell you why. But um, how? How can because, you represent these people and back these people? Do uh -huh. they know that you feel that way? Well, they voted for you to be in that office. Well, well, I don't know if he didn't like the system of welfare or the people who are on welfare, but the people. But he, he told he, me. But <laughs> so that well, that's coming from a judgmental place uh, to judge the people and not the system, right? So. But if we're just gonna say he's judging the system, right? He's the perfect person to uplift and elevate the people to get off welfare and think bigger. But someone, right. someone who's coddling them, making excuses, and, 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 and you know, just holding their hand throughout the way and giving them every excuse as to why uh, they are where they are and, and blaming everything except being accountable. That's the wrong person to 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 represent those people. That's the wrong person. You know, sometimes you got to have that tough love and not come at a judgmental from a judgmental perspective, but to say, mm -hmm. hey, let's look within. What can we do to change what's going on within to elevate? Hey, take yourself. Prime example, right? Well, you, we can look at both of us. Man, we're both, okay. from, Ple we're both from Pleasant Grove. Right. Okay. Now, here I am, here I am, wrote, wrote, wrote a book, you know, did my thing in IT, uh, you know, got other stuff going on. I, I want to talk about right now. We just talked about everything you got going on. I documented your story. I know your life story. Yeah. We can make every excuse, right? Now, of not elevating and doing better. Now, imagine if we had people and we probably did have these people, but imagine if we listened to these people who made excuses mm -hmm. for us and made us look like the victim and woe is me and wanted to keep us mm -hmm. downtrodden in the system. They're more damaging. They're doing more damage, more damage than someone that's criticizing me. They're both wrong, but at least the other person wants me to elevate where this, this fake love wants me to keep me in the position you know they found me in you know we got to be right. careful about that we got to be careful about being coddled and uh being patted on the head and and, and uh, giving excuses you know because we'll never elevate but like i said i mean you we know for a fact where we come from we come from that community right so we look within found the power within held ourselves accountable, okay? And the role hasn't been smooth. You were a young mother, I was a young father. I've made mistakes, you've made mistakes. But the thing is, we keep fighting. We right. never lay down, that's the thing. So I don't think it's hypocritical. Now, if he's judging the people, I don't like that. But I can judge the system and love the people and still hold them accountable and say, hey, we gotta do better. We got to get off the system. I can do that. I, that's that's. I, I hear you. I hear you. I just wasn't here for it. And mind you, this guy and I, we weren't in a major relationship, but we definitely dated. You know, mm -hmm. we dated and did a little more than date, but we weren't like exclusive, you know, okay. or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. but so, and that wasn't longer. That was maybe two years ago. Okay. So, but prior to him, and I'm going to even count his two years, I've really been single 
I've been single. You said why? You said why? Um, is Pretty Piper, Wise Piper, um, single? Well, I've been single. I have been single eight years. Um, after my children's father, and I will not call his name because a lot of people know who he is. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say his name. Right, right. Yeah, no, yeah, so he's, 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 um, you know, so my son's father, you know, when he did what he did to me, that just you know he hurt me, and I just you know went searching for me right what is it that i want what is it that i need what is it that i require from a man right and right. so that brings me to my current situation um well it's not really a situation anymore but you know this very recent situation with me so <clears throat> <laughs> it's so funny because I prayed and I now I don't want the people to think that I'm this holier than thou person because I am not you know and I just told you my favorite scripture in the bible is he without sin cast the first stone so I do not judge anyone or anything um so at least I try not to but I prayed and I asked to God, you know, well, maybe, maybe God, I, you know, that type that I'm used to, um, is not what I need because I'm used to that type. I know what I like to look at. I know what type of man, you know, that I go for with his stature, um, his status in the community, his status with, um, his work, you know, Maybe I need to try something different because that, that ain't worked out for me. Mm. So clear as day, God told me, okay, well, give, give a, what you're not used to a chance. So how are you going to know if you don't like it? If you've never right. tried it. Right. So that's exactly what I did. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. And I feel like I made a huge mistake. But, you know, I'm grateful for that because... I would have known that that's not for me. So I gave it a try and dude's trial period was totally over. It's totally over, but you know, I'm glad that I was able to show him something more than what he's used to so that he'll know his worth. You know, this guy had two failed marriages and um, me, I've never been married. All my siblings are married. And I just turned 40 and I've never been married. And so um, I'm the only one that's not married. Everybody else is. And so this guy, he's been in two failed marriages. And after a few months of dating him, dating him, I told him that I feel like you need to be by yourself, <laughs> you know, yeah. for a little while, you know, until you figure out what it is that you want, you know, because I personally, have been single I mean yeah I have been single for a while so I know what I want I know what I'm looking for but I don't feel like he knew what he wanted he wouldn't budge when I asked him for to do certain things uh like he just he told me he felt like I was trying to change him and maybe in a way you know I was just trying to show him something different you know but and he was hella cheap like you can't buy everything that you want from the dollar store. Right, like, right, right. So, so what are you looking for in a man? Because it seems like what you, what, what you were going but for see, his status. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mr. Booker, I don't like to profess that because, because I feel like if I, like, like you said, everybody's watching. A lot of people will be watching this. So if I'm telling you what it is that I'm looking for, then you're going to come in, you know, with those hidden agendas, at least in my eyes, you know, I need you to come in. I, I want to be able to recognize those things from you, you know, without you already knowing what it is. And then you come in with those things. And, and then a few months later, your ass is changing on me. I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> you try know, to, so. yeah, they're trying to create this person. Uh, right. Not, so, that. so what are you, so, what are, and I, I hate asking women this. I've never asked a woman this, but for the sake of this discussion. Okay. What do you bring to a man's life? Personally, you. Oh, well, well, first of all, 
I want to be clear and let it be known that I am nobody. I'm not trying to be anyone's mother. My children are 22 and 20 and I have a granddaughter. So I'm not trying to be anyone's mother out here. I'm not trying to change no man, you know, because I, I can't teach you how to be a man. I taught my sons how to be a man, but not no grown man. So for me, you know, um, I'm bringing you serenity, number one, because I know a man, a black man, I love my black man. I've never dated outside my race, but, and I love my black man. I want that to be clear. Um, I want to bring him serenity because I know that the man, the black man, you guys go through so much. You have the weight of the world on your shoulders. You're expected to know everything this this that and third you you expect the expectations of the world for the black man you already have it hard so when you come home it's going to be serene i'm not going to be i'm not here to argue with you picking with nitpicking with you i'm not that chick i'm definitely that's number one i'm gonna bring you serenity and just peace you'll be happy over here i'm gonna make sure of that <laughs> you know um you know, my grandmother told me, I was raised by my grandmother, you know that. So my grandmother told me a <clears throat> long time ago that you always, always leave a man with his dignity and his pride. You do not try to, you do not castrate a man in front of his friend, anywhere. You don't castrate him at all, especially in front of his friends. So I've always taken those things that my grandmother told me about relationships, about being with a man and just, um, and apply those where they need to be within my life. So if we're together, I'm not, <laughs> you could say, you know, like, like you want to be the leader and I'm going to let you lead because that's just how I was raised. I'm going to let them, I'm going to follow your lead. And if you fucking this over, I'm sorry, can we curse? Yeah, I might edit it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. If you over here messing this up, <laughs> if you over here messing something up and I told you already that it needs to be this way, I'm going to let you do it. How you, <laughs> you know, I'm going I'm to, yeah, yeah. you'll be like, oh, that's nice, baby. But, you know, I really feel like you could have, it would have probably worked better if you'd have, right. Right. you know, this, it's all this, about you know, delivery. whatever. Yeah. Huh? Right. It's all, it's about, all delivery. about the delivery. It's definitely all about the delivery. So, I mean, of course, I know how to be a boss. So anything that I know for me and it's worked for me, I'm going to help him on those levels. Like this particular past guy, this very recent past guy, his credit wasn't all that great. So I helped him. I showed him what to do to build his credit. I showed him how to be a better him. Um, and that's what I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna definitely show you, you know, smooth out the edges for you, you know, that you may not see or wrong, but I'm not just gonna be, you need to do this and you know, I, that's, oh, that's a nagging something, but I would right. never, I cannot personally, I cannot, cause I don't like all that loud and just yeah. rah, 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 that, yeah, no. That's not me. So, so That's do you think? Me. Do you think the pool is small to to uh to attract the man you want, or do you <laughs> say it again? Do you think the pool is very small for you to find the man that you're attracted to, or do you think you're too picky? You know, I I really had to sit back and um and assess myself because I was like, look, am I picky? Is it okay to be picky? You know, like. Because before I settled, you know, with my son's father, because that's all I knew, mm -hmm. you know, I settled. But dealing with him and dealing with the councilman and dealing with this last guy, I feel like me being picky is warranted, you know. It's warranted and it's justifiable. So <clears throat> that goes back to knowing your type. Right. You know, I know my type, but is my type always right? I don't know where to go at this point. I don't know if, I know that my type, there's something wrong with there. <laughs> there's something wrong there. Right. And then I know that the guy that I wouldn't normally go for, there's definitely something wrong there. So I need to figure out within me, 
you know, how can I get a little bit of both, you right. know, right. and be okay with it? Nobody's perfect. And I get that. I know that nobody's, I'm not perfect, right. you know, and, but I know what I will not deal with. Some things that are, I can't, I can't, and I will not tell like what we were talking about earlier, you know, explaining my type, but I will tell you my deal breakers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're still in a relationship, if you're still married to me, separated is not divorced. Separated is still married. You could easily get back with your, your separated spouse. So if you are married, stay away from me, period. You need to let me know up front because as someone as my, in my stature, I'm going to screen you like I'm screening you like for a government job. Mm. All I need is your name and your date of birth. That is it. That is all. all right. I'm going to run your name. Let because the brother, I don't let the brother know you're doing a background check on him. <laughs> I talked about this in my video. <laughs> I'm going to do a background check. Let I'm him know. Let, let him know, though. That should be a discussion. Ask him first, does he have anything he needs to reveal? And then say, I do. I'm going to do a background check on you. I, I take that back. I just lied. I didn't tell the councilman, and he was so angry at me. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, he, was, he was so angry angry at me he told me that i violated his privacy how yes yes how? okay i'm um, yes. okay before before how a job before a job can't even do a background check i gotta sign this privacy waiver this privacy act waiver but it's okay. public info oh man listen I think it I is think, public information i think you should be straight up and tell the person that you're gonna do it. Like well, in the video, in the video, when I explained how the lady did the background check on me, I would have been okay with it. Let's have a discussion first. Ask me what you want to ask me, and then say, I'm gonna do a background check on you. I would have said cool. I would have said cool. But to do it and then to call me over and uh you sitting up like you Al Capone and you got my background information on your laptop. That ain't cool. To, to now, see, anything. I didn't do it that way. I just, it was just information for me. You know, I wasn't walking around showing him, okay, what is this? What is this? I printed this off. What, what is this? I saw that you did that. I didn't do that. Right. You know, right. it was just for me so that I know, you know, because I don't want to be, I don't care. You know, he was, his thing was, I'm a city councilman, an interim mayor for my city. So clearly they have to have ran a, background check i don't care if you did graduate from harvard right. okay what i don't because of the things that i've been through in my past that you know about um i don't want to go on to watchdog.com and you a registered sex offender oh yeah yeah you know type you know so i'm just yeah. I'm just saying, you know, I'm doing it not just to, you know, to to be nosy about your business. I'm doing it to protect me. Yeah, I don't see anything children. wrong. I don't see anything wrong with the the background check. But I'm saying is, like in that situation, just say, hey, have you ever been accused or charged uh, with this these types of offenses? So then you're gonna get the straight up lie or the truth right then. And then say right up, right up, right up. Straight up. And then and but, then say, um, hey, just to protect my own self and my people, my family, I'm gonna do a background check. And well, for me, when you say he that he, be... he's either gonna say okay or he's gonna run. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna block you or he's gonna be like, okay. <laughs> Stacy, it really is not about well for me. The background, you know, as long as you're not no murderer mm -hmm. and somebody out here raping people, then anything else on somebody's background doesn't bother me. Right. It right. wasn't that. That's not why I'm scanning and, you know, trying to find out about these guys, find out about your past. I'm trying to find out if you're married. Oh. That's what I want to know because okay. that's, that's some huge, heavy stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, to deal with somebody that is married yeah and you out here living a double life and you're not giving me the option right 
to right. know whether uh, to to do I want to deal with that? Yeah, yeah. So let me put this situation out there with this current guy. So this Negro was married, uh, married still. However, um, he was separated, and and I knew that he was separated. He told me up front, and I was very pleased with that. I was okay with that, at least I thought. And so I was with him when he went and uh, got the divorce papers from the parents' house and with him when he signed them, with him when he mailed them and put them in the, uh, went to the post office and I was right there, right there. So that said a lot to me. But what pissed me off was the man had a stepchild a daughter now don't get me wrong i am a daddy's girl i love my daddy i love my daddy but he only has one biological child which is a son so you're going through divorce and the girl calls him and says i want to go to the graduation i want you to come to my graduation i can't come to your graduation i can't take off of work but um are you having a party i'll come to that right. so then he says to me that he's going to um he was just, i guess he was just mentioning it to me but i don't know if he was just mentioning it or if he was asking me at the time at that time because when he said it to me i said mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, nope it's too soon i cut him off and i said too soon he's like too soon for what i said but you just signed those divorce papers not even two weeks ago and the ink isn't dry and it's not final. And now you're going to go to a party for this child that ain't yours at her house where her mother lives, which where you used to live. I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with that. It doesn't make me feel comfortable knowing that you're going to your ex's place where you used to live and was the, the head of the house there for your stepdaughter's graduation. I said, how, now, what is the relationship with the, with the stepdaughter? Are you guys close? Like, did she call you for Christmas? I was right there. We were right, we were hanging out. I mean, I, you ain't say nothing to me. I mean, did she call you for New Year's? Wish you happy New Year's? Did she say happy birthday to you? I mean, like, do y'all talk? I mean, like, Right, right. Is this this sounds like a money thing? So if that's the case, why don't you just give her some money, you know? Um, or how about let's just buy her a really nice gift and you know, let's I'm sorry, someone's calling me. I had to I said, so why don't you just buy her a really nice gift and we take it to her, or you take it to her, take her to dinner and um and give her her gift, you know, really nice graduation gift, if you feel so strongly about going. And he told me I wasn't asking. Right. I was just telling you. Right, right. That really made me feel some kind of way. You know, even now, I mean, I know that, I mean, we're not, we're not married. I don't have a ring from him. Mm -hmm. So who am I to say? that he can or cannot go. Right. I'm sure some people were probably wondering that same very thing. And I had to really sit back and think, am I being selfish? Cause he even said to me, well, think about it with you and your stepmother. Y'all are still very close. Um, that is, I don't even say stepmother. I call her my other mother. I call her mom. Right. I, when I, when we're together, you know, I love my mother, but when I'm with my stepmother and we're out, I introduce her to people as my mother. She's my mom. You know, and even though after 27 years of marriage with her and my dad, they're now divorced, he told me it's the same situation. Well, how? I don't see, I don't see it. Right, right. You know, but he also told me that he's the only father figure that this little girl knew. He had been in her life for like 10 years or whatever. She's 18. So, you know, eight, 10 years, something like that. He had been in her life but I just wasn't comfortable with him going over to that woman's house. Yeah, I mean, and, and we and spoke about this. it left a really this. bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, we spoke about this and 
you really you really don't have much leverage in the situation because he is technically still married. He is technically still married. And uh, well, that's why I say, let me know if you're married or not, if I want to deal right. with that. I don't want to deal with that. Right. If yeah. you got a crazy baby mama, I mean, I have children. My kid's father is not going to give nobody no grief, you know, because he's married. Right. He's doing his own thing. But for me, I don't want to deal with nobody that's married or got a crazy ass baby mama. Yeah. Because I'm not that crazy baby mama. I don't want to deal with somebody. That, I don't, that's drama. I don't like drama. Yeah. Mess. Yeah. So let's go back to uh, your type. I have, I have this theory. And uh, okay. it's not it's not a theory I I uh, came up with. It's it's a it's not a new theory, but it's called the womb imprint. And what that is is uh is 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 believed that the first one or three uh, the first three one or three lovers a woman has can imprint her womb. And basically bind their souls together where uh, it messes with her psyche and that becomes her type. No matter if she's with men later on in life, one of one of three of these men she's she's been with first in her life has imprinted her womb. Uh, now she can come back there from a from healing, from cleansing, a renewal of mind and spirit, but it's believed. She'll always, until she does that, she'll always be drawn to that type. And uh, that's very important also for women who have been molested or raped, and they don't know why they're attracted to a certain type. And it can go back to that. But even aside from rape or molestation, just a, a normal sexual relationship, a lot of women is believed to have their womb imprinted where they're drawn to this type. And, and, I mean, they may be successful, Fortune 500 CEOs, but they're drawn to this thug because that is one of three of their first lovers. Well, what do you think about that? When you look on your own life, you don't have to reveal your type, but when you think about the first three lovers in your life, do they resemble your type? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that might not be a good thing though. That's not necessarily. I know. Yeah. So I need to cleanse. I need to cleanse. I'm ready to clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. And I realize that I don't want to keep making the same mistakes over and over. Yeah, I mean, it's a renewal of the mind. It's a cleansing. Have you have you ever fasted? I have. I have fasted. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think this time you need to fast, you know, with the intent of cleansing that, of cleansing your womb, that imprint, mm. that imprint and getting that out of your psyche, because that's a real thing. That's a real thing. Uh, and I don't think a lot of women know, know about that, why they're drawn. To what about type. men? Is it the same for men? I don't believe it's the same for men, uh, because I look. Oh, I look really? Back, yeah, I look back. Oh, I don't have a. I don't have a womb in that sense, and I'm. And you're a receiver. You're Earth, you know. So your your womb, your 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 your. We'll, we'll say this. Your your sexual organ will adapt to my sexual organ. My sexual organ doesn't adapt to you. You adapt to mine. To where when you with the man for so long. You can fit him, right? You you begin to fit him. Y'all begin to fit one another because of you. You you have adapted to him. There's no way he can adapt to you. He 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 can only be what he is, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> what right? I mean, without getting too 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 vulgar, he is what he is. So, but you as Earth as a woman, you can go in and out. You can adapt. You're a flower. You can adapt to whatever you need to adapt to. And that's the nature of a woman, too, to being able to adapt. You know, y'all adapt to situations. It's harder for men to adapt to situations, just the way our, our makeup is. But y'all will adapt to survive. Right. 
yeah. So and, and that goes with the with the sex also. So yeah. Uh, oh, I was just about to mention sex. Some people, like me, for and I can only speak on me. Mm -hmm. If I don't have it, I am okay. I'm okay. I don't have to just walk. You know, like like today, I wake up. Damn, I want. I need some sex. You know, it's not. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have it if I'm not receiving it. Right. But once I get it, I want it. And so for, that was the thing with this guy. He's, his mentality, he was almost, he's 40 years old, but he's like an old man mm. in a young person's body to me. Okay. Like, I see you and I immediately, I mean, we don't live together. I don't see you every day. So when I do see you, I'm ready to jump your bones. I'm ready to have fun, and then I'm gonna jump your bones. Right, right. I don't understand how you can have all of this in bed with you. I get out the shower and I'm lotion and glistening myself, smelling good, damn near naked in your bed, in your back. I feel your back. Mm. Like, what is that about? Like, he told me, well, I just was tired, but I haven't thought what the, what was the purpose of me coming over here? Like just to come over here and you go to sleep and you turn your back on me? Like all of this in your bed? Yeah. I mean, we, 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 we talked about this and, and, uh, um, I don't get it. I don't like it. Hey, either, either he is actually tired or something's going on. Uh, with them, we may need something, or he may not just be into you like that too. That's possible. Damn, but that's He's just not that into me. But I mean, that's life. That's <laughs> fine. I'll use my rose. It's fine. <laughs> that's like so. I wanted to. We talked about something. Well, I talked about something on another guy's platform. My brother, Soul Immortal. Uh, y'all check him out. But Soul Immortal. Yeah, Soul Immortal. Um, okay. Uh, do you think? Well, we, we we've come well in the western hemi western hemisphere. We've we've gone away from arranged marriages, mm -hmm. but sometimes I feel like we need to get back to that uh, for several reasons. But one of the reasons is: Do you think women do a great job of selecting men, or do they need to do? Do these men need to be vetted? And chosen by fathers, brothers, uncles, the community, the male community around her to see if he's qualified first. You know what? I would totally love that. If that happened for me, that'd be so great, you know. But in, in the world that we're living in right now, where are those men? Where are those, um, the vetted, the community that is, you know wanting to look out for the woman where are they i remember when i was growing up in my grandmother's neighborhood okay on the weekends preferably saturday afternoon or morning or a sunday morning uh after church and all that my grandfather and several other older guys in the neighborhood would block our street off because it wasn't a busy street in the first place. And they out there teaching the young men in our neighborhood how to change a flat, how to change the brakes, how to change the oil. They don't do those things anymore. Where are those men? Where are those men that actually care? They give a damn about the community. And these weren't people that they knew. I mean, they knew them, but they didn't feed them. Like that wasn't their, their family. Right, it right. was just the people in our neighborhood, children, because they wanted to teach them. They saw that there was a lot of um, single moms. So, okay, there's no man in the house, but we need to make sure that your sons know how to make sure your fluids in your car is checked, how to change the oil, change the brakes, you know, know how to check the pressure in the tire. You know, those kind of things it was my grandfather, my uncles, and the other men on our street. They would block the street out. That mm -hmm. so I look at 
what you're saying about the men picking, you know, I mean, yeah, picking the men for the girls, the women in the community, that would be great. I think that would be an amazing thing. But where are those men? There are no leaders. There's not, we don't have an, enough leaders right, in right. our black male co community. I mean, now our young men are learning how to live from the rappers right. on TV. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a couple of things going on with that. I mean, in a sense, you're right. Um, we got to step it up, men, uh, and be quality men, men that are worthy to be follow followed and to lead. Right, because not every man is made to, to you know, I'm not going to follow every man. Right, but on the flip side, I think uh, the man has, the black man has been disarmed uh, by the government. And, and... People don't, people don't have to listen to the black man, even the quality black man. Uh, are the women going to listen to him? Are the women going to follow? And then you got kids who have a feminine energy. You know, they're, they're, they're have, they have testosterone, but they also have this feminine energy because they're raised by single mothers. They don't want to <laughs> listen to older black men. You know, they don't, they'd rather listen to a woman before they listen to a man. And because so, I believe that the roles have flipped in a war, in a sense. Yeah, but it's not working though. It's not it's, working. It's not working. None of it's working. Yeah. So I think we both have to be accountable, the man and the woman. We have to be accountable. And we got to go back to the basics and uh hold ourselves accountable. The man has to say, hey, we messed up right here. And the woman has to say, Yeah, we messed up right here. And we got to bring it back together. And, and then the kids will fall in line, you know. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Man, I didn't know we was going to take it there. <laughs> yeah, we took it there, and I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. Hopefully, what we discussed will help someone. Yeah, I think it will. I think it will. Yeah. So, so what lies ahead for Pretty Piper? What lies ahead for me in my next venture, which we discussed this uh, a little over a year ago, you and I, <clears throat> and I didn't have the opportunity. It wasn't in front of me at that. It was, but it, I had so many other things going on. So I had to put it on the back burner, but my coloring book is now about to be that's done, right. literally. Right. Right. So, um, and that's called, you know, and people were like, why are you doing a coloring book? Number one, I love children. I love kids. If I could have had a bunch of kids, <laughs> I would have, but I am, you know, auntie to a lot of kids and uh, around me. So um, Pretty Piper Prince will have a coloring book coming out and it's called uh, Brown Girl in the Cockpit. And that's just, that's my other business. I have Pretty Piper Prince and Brown Girl in the Cockpit. So it will be basically me telling my story on how I became um, a pilot um, in a child's perspective. Um, and so the brown girl, which is me, will continue to be brown throughout the book. And I want the kids to be able to color everything else around me. Mm. So that'll be available on Amazon very soon. So thanks to you. I had no idea that Amazon even did this. So thank you so much for sharing that nugget with me. It means yeah. a lot to me. Yeah, I know we spoke about this and I hadn't heard from you about this in a while. So yeah, the artist, did you get your artist from Amazon or? I got everything from Amazon because all I did was just submit photos of myself around the plane, in and around the plane and in the classroom with children. Cause I do go to schools. If anyone is interested, um, I go to schools, um, in churches or whatever in our, my community, in our community and talk to the kids about aviation. Cause it's important. Right. It's important to me that they see me, you know, somebody that looked like them doing something out of the ordinary that they are not used to. And it's important that they see someone else doing something other than football, basketball, mm. rapping, mm. Instagram models. You know, I let these kids know. I just give them facts when I go to these schools and talk to them and I let them know, Hey, you know, 
there are 300, what is it, 300 or 350 people on the football team mm-hmm. every on the roster, something like that. Because, you know, you got your first string, second, third, you know, yeah. out, so forth, so forth. You know, so it's a lot of the football team. So just imagine, and even on a basketball team, NBA, there's 12 people on the basketball team. Right. Everybody ain't going to make it to NFL and the NBA. Facts. Everybody's not going to make it. Young man, I really hope you make it. I'm going to be watching. And I hope you make it. Right. However, the reality of it all is everyone is not going to make it. Right, right. You know? So just imagine how many schools right here in Texas. And just think, every kid in the school wants to go to the NFL or NBA. Oh, yeah. Now, multiply that by 50, because we got 50 states. That's, mm. And who knows how many cities in every state, how many right. schools in every state. Every year, you got the same kids wanting to do the same thing, and everybody's not going to make it because everybody ain't going to be able to. It's only 300 on the football team, right. 12 on the basketball team. Limited spots. Yeah, There's limited spots. And I not just... So when I talk to kids about aviation, I let them know that there's more than just pilots. Right. You know, you could be an aircraft mechanic. You can be um, an aviation, a person that sell planes. You can be a person that build planes. Yeah. You could be, there's so many jobs. Just imagine Lovefield Airport or DFW Airport. There's so many jobs. Right, right. In great the job. aviation field. Yeah, great jobs. Yeah. So many. That makes lots of money. I just so happen to be one of those people that like to fly planes. Yeah. You know, and, and before we end this, I, I have to let the fellas know, fellas, if you see me out in public, it's okay to speak, number one. Number two, don't let the career choice fool you because I do have a type and that type does not, I will say that type does not, I don't like the guy that do the same thing that I do. Let's just say that. <laughs> okay. I mean, because I got pilots that hit on me all the time. It's nice to meet you, brother. I'm so glad. Look, keep up the good work because there's right. not many of us. Right, right. You know, so just because I fly planes and he fly planes don't mean that we're going to hook up. I, I'm, that's not my, I'm already a geek. I don't want this other geek. You know, <laughs> I, I, I totally so, get it. I totally get it. You know, so I mean, it's okay to speak and don't assume just because if you like, if they you send me a friend request on Facebook or follow me on Instagram, you know, don't don't be inviting me to all these uh these dungeon rooms and stuff. I I I'm not into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm not into that. I, I think I saw you that post don't. that on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> I was so serious. Listen, like, um, and, and, and with this guy, this recent guy, I had to tell him all this trap music and uh, the, don't get me wrong, I like my trap music. I like my Mo3 and the Pushites. I, I like to listen to that every now and again, too. Right, right. I like our music. But that ain't gonna make me want to jump your bones. Right. Know how to set the mood, fellas. Come on. Yeah. Set the mood. What is Step up? up? Step what? it up, fellas. That is not going to make me want to jump your bones. Mm. And hey. just because you smoke your weed, if some enjo- indulge, I, that don't bother me that you do. I, I'm not going to put an X on your back just because you do, you know, right. as long as your priorities are together. I need you to have your priorities together, fellas, you know. Um, my sister and I, I'm going to say this because this is important. My sister and I were having a conversation about um, her, her, her first child's father and how um, <laughs> it's so funny, how he just assumed that she wanted to I don't know what kind of relationship that was going on, but she he assumed that she wanted to be have a threesome because he wanted to have a threesome. Mm. And that's the reason why they're not together. So it's just important to me that y'all know that, you know, don't don't be assuming 
communicate. Stuff. Yeah, communicate. Communicate. It's very, it's very important. Communication is everything. Me, I like to talk about things. If something is bothering me, you know, just because we're and just because we're talking about it doesn't mean that I'm nagging about it. I I want to know. I genuinely want to know. If it's something that I did to offend you, if it's something that I did that you don't like, just say that. Tell me that. You know, if the if the moment is already heated, you know, timing is everything also, fellas. If the moment is already heated, don't be bringing up stuff right then and there at that moment. Let that, let that woman cool off and vice versa. Women, if that man is upset about something, don't be just throwing a whole bunch of million things. He already got everything. The whole world is mad at him for his skin color. Don't be throwing stuff at just no timing. Timing is everything. Wait until it's quiet and still and have that conversation. It's okay to have conversations. That's important. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Well, hey, I was going to ask you to leave us with some words of wisdom, but I think that was a perfect ending. Aww. Perfect. Perfect. I want to thank you again for being the first guest, first episode of a series. I hope I didn't disappoint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The series, the Chronicles of the Independent yes. Single Black Female. You did not disappoint. You blessed the people. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I got to get back to work now. All right. Get to it. All right. Peace. Peace.